Hello, and thank you for purchasing the copy of file share function for a PowerShell from Bold Zebras. My name is Shane, and I'm going to walk you through how to get that installed. So here on my desktop, you can see I have the zip file that you would have received after you purchased it. I'm going to open up the zip file. There's three files in here. One is the README that probably pointed you here, um, and it has all the details and all the step-by-step. -step. If anything here, you need to uh, get that. And then it has these two uh, PowerShell files. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab those two files. We're going to copy those out. And I'm going to go over here to my C drive. And I'm going to make a new folder called Bold Zebras. Really, you can put it anywhere you want, but I'm going to put them there. And you're going to want to do these steps on whatever PC that you want to be able to run, or server, that you want to be able to run this PowerShell function from, right? Because you're going to need to import this every time. So now that you have those two files in place, let's minimize this guy and let's open up PowerShell. And so to install the module, what you want to do is you're going to do a import module. And then we're going to do C colon uh, bold zebras add. And then we want the PSD1, right? D1 is the, uh, the manifest file for the module. If you do M1, it'll work, just uh, won't be as fanciful. So we hit enter. And now if we do a get module, We'll see that version 1.1, that's the current version I have, add BC uh, file share to SPO is here. You'll also see they have the SharePoint Patterns and Practices PowerShell module. You're going to need to have that guy um, installed and it's the right version in order for all this to work. To check that, what you can do is you can say get module, and then you can pipe that over to select name, comma, version. And you can see that I have version 2.16.1706.1. That's the uh, latest version as of the shipping of this product, so that's the version this is supported on. Any of the subsequent versions, it'll, this will also be supported on, so you can have a later version, but you can't have an earlier version. And the uh, PowerShell module actually checks for it to just to make sure that you're uh, you know, being honest. So, all right, with that done, we're ready to run the uh, commandlet. Now, the first thing that we really want to do kind of getting prepped, though, is you're going to want to connect, right? So you're going to do a connect PMP online, and then you're going to want to do your tenant, and so in my case, it's going to be this guy right here. You hit enter, and it's going to prompt you for your credentials. And so we'll get my credentials. I won't type them. I'll uh, cut and paste so I don't make any typos. We'll paste that there, and then we'll put this guy here, just like that. And so after a couple of seconds, you should see you are connected, right? If you want to validate, you could do a git PMP site. And so you can see it returns something, so we know that we're uh, set up. And you want to make sure that you connect to the site collection that has the document library you want to copy your files to. So with all that set, we're ready to go. So now we can clear our screen off. Let's talk a little bit about how you use the commandlet. So what you do is do an add bc file share, and then we'll do the version where you do the parameters first. So we'll say add bc file share, and then we'll do file share source. And so this can be anything, it can be something in the form of server slash share. Okay, that would work. Or it could be in the form of C colon share folder, right? Something like that. That's valid. Or you can even use PowerShell uh, paths. So dollar sign, and then I think I named it share. There you go. So something like that. So any of those options will work just fine for you. So whichever one you're most comfortable with in your parameters will work. Next up, dark document library target. So over here, we'll grab this guy out, copy, minimize, and then we'll paste in. Um, we do trap for all the different iterations of this, so as long as you've got the right thing in there somehow, some way, it's a valid SharePoint URL, uh, we'll extrapolate out what you uh, really meant. Log home, um, your new logs, I don't know, right? You can put whatever you want. Default owner, so for me, that's 53. Remember, this is, a uh, the, any files in the file system that the user doesn't match out there in uh, SharePoint Online, it's going to set this to be uh, 53 in my case because that's my uh, user called former employee. Uh, we talked about it in the previous video that got you here, right? Uh, you can use git pmp user and that'll give you all your users and their ID and then you can figure out which ID you want, but you need a number here, not a name, all right? Um, also, speaking of users not matching, it might be worth you running a small test in your own environment. Uh, you know, just copy 10 files up and see if you're getting the right user matches because if you've done some real weird shenanigans with namings and stuff, you might have to go in and modify the PowerShell code to uh, account for, you know, matching your names, right? As long as your names are, you know, it was domain slash Shane and now it's Shane at 
company dot on Microsoft dot com, right? The Shane's match, life is good. Or S Young or Shane dot Young, you know, you can match in all those different things. Just as long as there's a consistency between the two, this will take care of you. All right. And then the last one here, Amber Sands. So add PMP file, the uh, uh, power, patterns of practice PowerShell that we use to push this stuff up. Um, it does not support Amber Sands right now. Um, so what we've done here is we've given you the option you can either skip them. So just leave them on the file system. We'll mark them in the uh, warning log file so you can go back and manually move those, upload those with the browser later. Or you can say, um, skip, uh, so that would be true. Or if you do a uh, false here, false says take those files, change the ampersand to and, A capital A capital N capital D on the file system, and then copy the file up there. So it will change your uh, files. So just kind of keep that in mind. Play with that a little bit and make sure you're comfortable with what it's going to do if you have amber sands. Um, it will log that activity for you though. All right, so that should do us. So we should be able to hit enter here. And so after a few seconds there of you know processing all the uh, checks and balances that need to do, you can see that it created me a folder called your new logs. It's copying file four of 16 right now. And so you can see that it skips uh, skipping the file chain or share a really big file text because it's too large. Another uh, downside of add PMP file is it doesn't support files that are larger than 250 megs, even though SharePoint Online does. So we have to skip over all those files. We mark them in the log. You can go and manually up those, upload those with um, uh, the browser later on. But there, there's just nothing I can do. There's no programmatic way to push those out there right now. So we had to skip those. You also see I have a, a warning. So the file owner Chewy, so Chewy was one of my local users. Um, he owned expenses from dog.pdf. Uh, so Chewy got fired after he created this file, so he is not found in SharePoint. So it's going to be uploaded with the default user, which we know is our user 53. So it's done. Here's our log file locations. Um, so you can go and check both of those as you need. And then also, um, you know, done. 15 files were copied, right, instead of 16, because it knows we skipped one of the files. Right, this, this Chewy file didn't get skipped, it just got pushed up there with a different user. And so if we go over to our browser and do a refresh, we'll see that uh, Shane, myself, you know, I own these files, so that was with me, yay, and it has the current or the metadata from the file. And former employee, this is the one that Chewy owned, uh, is the user that we set for that particular one. So pretty cool stuff, right? It's up there, it's great, life is grand. So that's how you can run it with parameters. The other way, let's clear off our screen. The other way that you could do this is you can just type in add BC file share to SPO and hit enter. And so now it's just going to prompt you for that same information. What file share would you like to copy? Well, let's go out here. We'll use a different format this time. Same, same folder, so it'll be the same files. C colon share. Where would you like to create the log files? If I just hit enter, it'll just make them, uh, it'll make a directory there called copy logs and put them in. We'll do that. Where's our document library? Well, let's go delete all this before we uh, do it again, right? Say hit that. Oh, hit that. We'll say delete and delete. And while that goes, we'll copy that off. Minimize him. So we'll paste that in. And right, and we talked about it can be in different forms. So I'll strip off all that and just do slash docs like that. Uh, what user ID? And so this time we'll leave that one blank. So we'll just say enter. And then for files uh, with amber amb, amb, sand, easy for me to say, um, right? You get the type S to skip or U to upload. So slightly different than the true and false before, uh, above, but just easier from a if you're just kind of reading through. So we'll say this time instead of skipping all the files, we will um, actually let's make sure they're still there. Yeah. So this file still uh, and hates Todd. So instead of that, we'll say this time we want to upload it, and we'll watch how it changes. So we'll say U. And now that we provided all the information, it created the copy logs because we did a different directory. We're back to two of 16. You know, we're skipping the, uh, the really big file. We have the issue with the Chewy file again. Uh, but other than that, it should be smooth sailing. We can also go over here and see already that this file got renamed from the ampersand to A and D all capital, right? It had to get renamed in the file system before it could get copied up. And then if we go over here while we're waiting on that to finish, we could do a refresh and see that the files are starting to pour in. And then notice this time that instead of this being former employee, it's mod administrator, right? So I did, so Chewy's not valid. I didn't specify a user to set it as, so it used the user that I was connected to the patterns and practices uh, SharePoint with to uh, get in there. So that's how it works.
awesome. We'll go back over here, we'll minimize this, we'll minimize this. And so you can see that it's all done. Um, so the only other thing I'll point out real quick and then I'll let you go is, you know, this file right here, the add BZ file share to SPO, um, the PSM one, right? That's the module. So if we open that um, with our friend Notepad, or you could open that with the uh, PowerShell ISC, but this is all the PowerShell code. So uh, because this video is publicly available, I'm not going to go through the code uh, with you here, but it's all in there. It's all commented. So you can go in and uh, see how I'm doing things. You can adjust things if you don't like the way I'm doing certain things or the way I'm handling. Maybe I'm logging poorly. I'm certain there's plenty of PowerShell in there you're not happy with if you're a PowerShell guru, but all the pieces are there so you can check them out. You can use those in your scripts or adjust this one as you need. Or if you need help with any of those adjustments, right? Uh, free support for any of this as far as using the way it is. But if you want to make edits and things like that, you can engage with me through Bold Zebras or you can email me shane.young at boldzebras.com and I'll be happy to help you uh, make those and talk about what it would uh, cost, what type of project it would take to get that done. So cool. All right. Well, I think that's everything you need. So thanks. Have a great day.